this morning. There are unverified reports, we must stress that at this point, that Russian forces have used chemical weapons in an attack on the besieged city of Mariupol. Yeah, it comes after the Prime Minister went to the country for talks, as we well know now, with the Ukrainian uh, President. Joining us now is Minister for the Armed Forces, James Heapy. Good morning to you. It's good to see you. Now, we, we haven't got clarification yet, but the Foreign Secretary said there would be consequences if that had been the case. What consequences are we talking about? What could we actually do? Well, look, as the Prime Minister said the other week, there is um, real value in ambiguity because uh, I think uh, there's a deterrent effect on President Putin uh, if he knows that all options are on the table, but we don't give him the opportunity to make a judgment over whether any particular response is worth um, doing it in the first place. But um, all options on the table means everything that it sounds like. And... Um, that's an important thing for him to know. It's an important thing for Ukrainians to know. It's an important thing for British citizens to know. How confident do you feel that we're actually going to be able to ascertain what's happened? Well, reasonably confident. I think that there are, you know, overnight, defence intelligence here in London haven't been able to verify, and nor have our colleagues in uh, intelligence agencies uh, around the the world. And in fact, nor have the Ukrainians been able to verify it yet. President Zelensky only referred to reports of the use of chemical weapons um, rather, than, uh, rather than himself saying they definitely had been. Clearly, we will rely heavily on evidence from the Ukrainians, but there are uh, other ways which I wouldn't want to discuss on air uh, that we'll be able to gather some evidence as well. How concerned are you and how concerned is the government at what we are seeing the Russians do at the moment? I don't mean in the specific attacks, horrific as they are, but in the regrouping that we're seeing taking place. So um, I suppose it's an interesting answer because I, I'm concerned in that I think that the fighting that is going to happen this spring and this summer in the Donbass is going to be, uh, is going to be extremely violent and will be... Uh, quite a big army on quite a big army. Uh, I'm relieved that uh, the Russians have clearly abandoned their original plans and that Kyiv and central Ukraine uh, will no longer be uh, directly in this conflict, that everything is going to be focused on the Donbass. And already we're seeing life in Kyiv um, start to return to normal. So in that sense, it's a, it's a good thing. Um, but I also think there's a big opportunity because I think Putin's hubris has defined much of what has happened uh, in the conflict so far. And I think his hubris is at play in the plan that the Russians now appear to be executing. They clearly have uh, the May the 9th victory parade uh, in mind as a date by which they need to have achieved something. And so I think that what we're going to find is um, Russian forces being thrown into the Donbass at a time of year when the ground is incredibly muddy. The time to do armoured manoeuvre in Ukraine is either in the dead of winter when the ground is frozen or in the height of summer when the ground is hard. And I think what we're about to see is um, long Russian armoured columns stuck on roads. And as we saw north of Kyiv three weeks ago, that presents some pretty easy pickings for the Ukrainians. If there is an opportunity, how do we uh, exploit that? By sending as many anti-tank weapons as we can and encouraging our allies around the world to do likewise. And that's exactly what we've been doing, as well as anti-aircraft weapons. The Prime Minister's also announced we're going to send anti-ship uh, anti uh, weapons. And we're sending 120 armoured vehicles, uh, which Ukrainian troops will arrive in the UK shortly to begin training on. In terms of those armoured vehicles, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, my sources are telling me that these are Spartans that we're sending out, except we don't have any. We, we, we gave them all to Latvia. No, that's incorrect. We've got lots of Spartans. He might, your source might be referring to uh, a light reconnaissance vehicle called a scimitar, uh, which we sold to Latvia, but even then we didn't sell all of them. Uh, the capability that we have uh, offered to the Ukrainians and my counterpart, uh, Vladimir Hakramov, was here in the UK last Tuesday and we uh, took him down to Salisbury Plain to look at all of this stuff and explain what it did. Um, they will get uh, in the first tranche 
uh, 35 Spartans plus uh, a number of armored ambulances and recovery vehicles, uh, and then around 80 protected mobility vehicles that we bought for the Afghanistan conflict, um, but we think would be very useful uh, as a means of moving people and materiel through artillery barrages to the, uh, to the front line. Okay. Look, Minister, it's really good to talk to you this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Of course, we'll have more developments on this story. We have to say those reports haven't been confirmed, and not by the UK nor by uh, Ukraine. But as we follow the developments, we'll bring them to you here.